Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple just released the macOS Sonoma 14.6.1 update. Not only a week after the 14.6 update, today we are going to be focusing on Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs with 1.5.0. We're going to test now 11 different machines. Look at this lineup, and I added one that you guys have been asking for the mid 2012 13 inch MacBook Pro. Interesting enough, this is one of the most popular models for Open Core Legacy Patcher, and we finally got one in the lab to be able to test against. You're going to want to stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. First off, I wanted to adjust some of the feedback that I'm getting for the two videos. A lot of you like the two different videos. We have supported Mac viewers and we have unsupported Mac viewers and we're splitting them up so you can just concentrate on one. Now, I did see a couple people in the comments that are saying that, hey, I have both. I have my Mac for my newer stuff and I have my older Mac that I have for my other things. And I like everything in one video. I'm hearing you guys too, but we'll see how the dual video format works. It helps me get out that support video quickly that everybody's looking for. Then I can roll back and concentrate on this one without trying to jam everything into that first video. So thanks a lot for that feedback. The next thing I wanted to just some comments. This one here, Black and White Jazz says, we installed Open Core Legacy Patcher 1502 months ago. Why are you talking about it as if it's just out? This is actually a great question and I want to answer this. I've been doing Open Core Legacy Patcher update videos for a long time now. I've seen it work flawlessly, but if you're a long time viewer of the channel, you also know that an update can cause havoc on a system. What happens is, is that Apple changes something that's not compatible with the 150 patcher and then all heck breaks loose. The key here, and that's why we're testing 11 different test Macs here in the fleet, is that maybe it only affects iMac or maybe it only affects MacBook Air. We wanna make sure that we're covering all those so we can try to catch those before you install on your machine. A lot of times, like the previous update with 14.6, all the machines pass with flying colors, but that has definitely not happened in the past where we've had multiple issues against a previous version. And then once the developers know about that problem, they can address it and release a hotfix. So again, that's a great question, but this is why we're going over each macOS update because it could cause problems with the current version of the patch. I just had to address this other one from Spiral of Hope. Hot damn, bro. Those are some chapter notes. Well done. And <laughs> Thank you for that comment. And I wanted to address the chapter notes. Here's my chapter notes for 14.6 and 150. There's a lot of people in YouTube that says, don't do chapter notes because why do you want people hunting around in your video? You want them to watch all the video for watch time. Well, I think that's bull crap and nothing annoys me more without having to get to the point where I need to go. And don't get me wrong. I know I go into all these things really deep and it can go on long. So that's why I put these in here. If you don't want to hear about this or that you can go to the exact point in the video that you want to and that's what I hope you guys want and most of you I can see by the numbers you watch the entire video and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. one more I wanted to cover was from Susan G and she mentioned testing applications I try to do the best I can to bring as many Macs into this but application testing has been a problem and she mentioned that hey the TV app crashes so I'm gonna try to see if I can launch a couple apps and do a little bit more app testing for some of the machines Machines to get some of that out. I tested it on 2011 iMac just a second ago, but I didn't test it on that 2012 mini. So we'll do that in this video and keep these comments going. I'm going to try to make these testing videos with this feedback that you're giving. Now back to those chapter notes, since we really dove in pretty deep with the 14.6.150, we're going to pick up the pace in this video. We're going to cover in what's in 14.6.1. We'll talk a little bit about the patcher and then we're going to jump into some of the testing in the machines and the recommendation of whether you should install the 14.6.1 update or not at the end. So if you didn't catch my 14.6.1 update video for supported Macs, let's quickly go over what is inside this update. This update only came out one week after 14.6. So usually when Apple does that, it's a pretty big deal, whether it's something that broke in 14.6 or something that's a big security related issue like a zero day that's threatening machines and users. Well, with this particular update, and it is related to advanced data protection in iCloud. 
So if you use iCloud and you sign in, you have the ability to do end-to-end -end encryption for your Mac. If we look at advanced data protection, it is used for iCloud and you have to have your Apple ID signed in. You have to have two-factor authentication set up. You need a password or passcode set for the device and you need an account recovery contact or recovery key. Where that's supported is on all devices that you're signing to. For Mac, that's Mac OS Ventura 13.1 or later. So if you have that enabled, then this update is for you because the problem is you can't turn it on and you can't turn it off if you installed 14.6. So that's a big problem if you're utilizing that feature. With that said, a lot of times there's other fixes, including security fixes. We've got zero. With this particular update, there's zero security fixes in this release. There's also no Safari changes because Safari was not updated. So this is a really weird release. And now even though it says zero new features, the patch notes themselves say bug fixes and the advanced data protection. That means that there is some bug fixes in this release, but we don't know what the heck they are. And again, I keep saying this, but I wish Apple would tell us what they are because maybe they fix something that you have or a problem that you're having, but that's what we have to roll with right now at this point in time. And that's a little summary of the 14.6.1 changes. Now let's jump into some of the test devices. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go newest to oldest and certain models have certain different features. Like for example, I have the 2017 in here because it supports the touch bar and touch ID and those have had problems in the past. So I make sure I test those. And for example, the 2014 Retina is Kepler based GPU, which has had problems in the past. So each of these individual machines have different things or like the the Mac Pro has a metal compatible graphics card and updated Wi-Fi. We don't want to make sure those are working. So let's start off first with our 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro. Okay, here's our newest device in the fleet, our mid-2017 15-inch MacBook Pro. We're running 14.6.1, Open Core Legacy Patcher 150. This machine needs the kernel debug kit and is using the latest version 23G93. We have AMD Legacy GCN patches, modern wireless, and the T1 security chip. I tested the touch bar, the touch bar works great, and Touch ID does unlock the Mac, so this machine is working A-OK, -okay, and the update went really well. Next up, I love this little guy, our MacBook 12 inch Retina early 2016. That's rocking a 1.1 gigahertz dual core Intel M3. We've got eight gigabytes of RAM and Intel graphics. This machine does not need the kernel debug kit and we do get the system extension updates for the systems that do not use the kernel debug kit. We're running Intel Skylake, Modern Wireless, and PCIe FaceTime camera, and everything went A-OK -okay with this machine, no issues whatsoever. Next up is our iMac Retina 5K 27 inch, late 2015. And this one has been requested by a lot of users because they've reported problems from 2012 to 2015 iMacs with booting problems and different things like that. So we tried to bring this one into the fleet to see if we could catch some of those, but not this time around because 14.6.1 installed just fine. 1.5.0, we did need the kernel debug kit on this machine for 14.6.1, and we're running AMD Legacy GCN, Intel Skylake, and Modern Wireless. No issues whatsoever in a 27 inch 2015 iMac. Next up is our MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch mid 2014. This is a 2.5 gigahertz with 8, 16 gigs of RAM. We've got our Nvidia Kepler and our Intel Haswell. So we do not need the kernel debug kit, but we do get the system extension updated messages before we restart. Everything went okay on 14.6.1 and Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.5.0. Next up is our good old trusty trash can 2013 Mac Pro. We're running a 3.7 quad core Intel Xeon and we've got 16 gigs of RAM, and this is our main caching server. You can see here how much software updates that we've served over the network from this machine over the last seven days, 126 gigabytes worth of updates. So caching server has really come in handy with this machine. We are running AMD Legacy GCN, and we also have modern wireless patches, and we do need the kernel debug kit, and everything's A-OK -okay on 150 and 14.61. Next up is our Mac Mini late 2012. We're running a 2.5 dual core Intel i5 with four gigabytes of RAM. We've got our Intel Ivy Bridge and our modern wireless and we do not need the kernel debug kit and we have our system extension messages. And we also wanted to test our Apple TV because we mentioned that in the beginning of the video for this particular machine and we'll click on start watching and everything looks okay. Now keep in mind just because it works on this system 
doesn't mean that it's going to work on someone else's computer or there's not another problem on someone's computer. But seeing this work like this is a good thing. Maybe there's just a problem with that particular app there on that machine, but it's good to see that this is working so far. Other than that, A-OK -okay on this 2012 Mac Mini. Next up is our new entry in our fleet, our mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro running an i5 2.5 gigahertz dual core with Intel HD Graphics 4000 and 4 gigabytes of RAM. This machine's again, like I mentioned earlier, is one of the most popular models that is in the list due to the analytics for Open Core Legacy Patch. And there's a reason why this machine sold for a long time because it was one of the final laptop models that included a CD DVD burner in it. So this was used in schools and education. It was a low price model that was, I think it sold all the way up to almost 2015 or 2016, if I remember correctly. We are running Intel Ivy Bridge and Modern Wireless. We did need the kernel debug kit and everything installed A-OK -okay on this 2012 13 inch MacBook. Okay, we only got four left. Now we're in the land of non-metal graphics compatibility cards. Let's take a look at our late 2011 17-inch MacBook Pro. This 2017-inch late 2011 is running a 2.4 gigahertz quad-core Intel i7. We're running four gigabytes of RAM. We have our AMD Terascale 2 GPU disabled through a PRAM, com through an NVRAM command due to the fact that these things are failing. And if they are failing, that's how to save it and still use the Intel card. And most of these machines have a failed GPU for the primary the AMD side. We are also running Intel Sandy Bridge, Modern Wireless, and Legacy Keyboard Backlight patches. We do need the KDK for the AMD side, and we are running AOK 1461 on 1.5.0. Next up in the fleet is our mid-2011 27-inch iMac. This thing is still a beast, running a 3.4 quad-core Intel i7 processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and we're running an AMD Radeon HD 6970M 1 gigabyte GPU. We also have Intel Sandy Bridge graphics and legacy wireless patches. We do need the kernel debug kit because we're running the AMD side, and everything is running AOK 1461 and 1.5.0. Next up is the beast, the mid 2010 5,1 Mac Pro. This bad boy is running two Xeon 2.66 6 core Intel processors. It's running an upgraded graphics card with NVIDIA NVS 510 2 gigabytes, and we are also needing the modern wireless patches and legacy USB 1.1 and we needed the kernel debug kit. I wanted to show the difference between these two messages. You normally you will see unless you're connected to Ethernet the warning about not being able to check if there's any new releases of open core legacy patcher before the patching begins. And it says be aware that you may be using an outdated version for this OS. If you're unsure, verify in GitHub that open core legacy patcher 1.5 Point zero is the latest official release. I always mention this that and that you, we should make sure that we're on the latest version before we patch so you shouldn't even have to worry about this but if you are connected to Ethernet this is the message that you'll actually see would you like to apply these patches because it did check it found that 150 was the latest and it's ready to go so that's why I wanted to show you these two different messages other than that A-OK -okay on everything with 150 and 1461. Last but not least is our mid-2010 13-inch polycarbonate MacBook. I like this little guy because this was sold a lot and used in education. It is tough as nails and it's, I think it's a beautiful machine. And it still runs Sonoma. Yes, it is a little bit slow because we are getting back there. We're running a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo and that kind of struggles a little bit compared to the i5s and i7s, but it still gets the job done because it's got an SSD in there and it still can run the operating system. And we did need the kernel debug kit, but I did not get a screenshot of that. And we're running AOK -okay on 14.61 and 1.5. 
Check out this clean slate. All 11 machines are now shut down and we made it through all of the testing devices. Now, let's talk about whether I recommend installing the 14.6.1 update on your unsupported Mac. This seems like a pretty clear cut answer, right? If you're using advanced data protection, sure, install it. But there's a little bit more to that. And what I mean by that is if you're not on 14.6, then I do recommend installing 14.6.1 because it's the only version available from Apple. Let's use an example. Let's say you're on 14.4 and you want to get the latest security updates. Well, sure, you could install 14.6 with the full installer, but if you go to software update, all that's going to be shown to you is 14.6.1. And that includes every fix in 14.5 every fix in 14.6 and all the fixes that we see that we talked about here for advanced data protection in 14.6.1 so again it's all cumulative all the updates are packed into here for the previous updates and that's why you would want to install 14.6.1 if you didn't install the previous one two or three releases and is also why we are testing here to make sure that everything runs okay let me know what you thought of this video if you have any questions please put them in the comments and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.